Hello, everyone, and how are we? So welcome to today's Woodwork and Wisdom. If you've read the description, you might think this is pre-recorded. No, I am live, I promise, okay? I am here, it's me, okay? Right? So today, description-wise, what did we put? I mean, originally, it's going to be shaving stars. What is that? I've heard of shooting stars. So I'm just going to try to do something a little bit different, okay? This idea as a video originated from a, an email from a guy went along the lines of the videos are great during lockdown they kept me sane but i don't have a wood life or a fret so i tend to do some hand tool work so i got lumbered with this along the lines of jace you can make some christmas decorations using no machinery nothing extravagant keep it as simple as you can all right okay so a little bit of research, the Scandinavian countries, traditionally their Christmas tree decorations would have been made out of wood, pine, lots of it, okay? So that's one of the things they used to do. So, and it's amazing how your modern day Christmas decoration, what is it? It could be glass, some of, if you've got a bit of money, lots of plastic. Really? Could we do something different? So maybe we can do some wooden ones that, Give you something a little bit different. Have a nice thing with this idea. You could get your kids involved with this. This is quite simple to do, quite safe. Yes, you'll need a bit of a all right, little bit of assistance with them, but that should be fun. They can add a bit of colour to it if they want. They can add glitter. They can okay, whole range of different things you could throw at this to make it a bit more sparkly, a bit more bing. Okay. So we're going to look at a few of the things we're going to go through. We're going to start with some really simple ones. Going to give you something a bit more extravagant. I'd love to see what you do if you take this up and have an idea. I'd love to see those things. There's not going to be any penguins this afternoon, I'm sorry. Okay, so hopefully we're going to get through this. Now, so let's just have a look at a few things. Um, got a couple of things in behind we're going to finish off. So, Ben, let's just have a look on camera two, is it? No, three, look. All right. Isn't that nice? So you can imagine this hung up on your Christmas tree. Vertical, going kind to of look fantastic. We might do the back for this. This one's just got flat back at the moment. You could do a door reef, incorporate some holly in amongst this. Could look really good as well. So don't go thinking this could be quite dull. This is uh, just pine. Let's just grab this bit. Okay. That's quite nice. Again, you can imagine hung up, it'll spin on your tree, it'll go around. So quite decorative. In behind me, we've got a whole range of different things up here. Let's move that one back into there. Uh, let's see if I can grab this off. This is a bit like what, we, what we've already looked at. Double-sided. That's quite nice. All right. So simple to do in my... Let's see if I can get the paper clip back on there. I put everything on paper clips in behind me just to make it quick and easy. I can get them off. Um, we discussed this with a group. Um, Carl wins idea... Did not make paper chains. Okay, Cohen. Um, so can have something as simple as a paper chain. You could make some lovely tinsel like this, couldn't you? Go around the tree, you can get across your ceiling. Okay. So let's have a look at what we're going to do to start with. And we said we're going to start real simple. Hey Ben, I think Ben, let's go down to other one, mate. I'm sorry. All right. Um, let's see if I can give you a backdrop. We're going to do small Christmas tree. Okay. You could colour this in. We've got the stain markers, chrome craft markers that will go on there, okay? So that's where we're going to start. Real simple little Christmas tree. So what do we need for this? In reality, first thing you're going to need is a hand plane. First thing we need to do, because I've been practising for a few days, um, we're going to need to sharpen it. So a bit of a test honing guide glasses i've got a low angle jack plane i'm going to use i've got a couple of planes on here i want about two inch wide i've got a 30 degree bevel and we did some of this and we've done it quite a lot over the year but i need to just give this a slight touch up so load it in 30 degrees get my lumps up in the right place tighten things so that equal too much one side let's back that one off a little bit that's better Pull it up so it's equal, check it square, check things look equal, and do that front stop. And again, we want to be quick with this because our focus is on what we want to make. I just need a little bit of water, just need something on there. So we've got our scary sharpening board, 1200 and two and a half thousand grit abrasive. 
suction blade going to make this easier to do. So one, two, okay. That didn't take long. It took me no more time talking about it than actually doing that. So let's just knock the bear off the back. Last thing I want, another strop. Pull that down. Same on here. So we turned over, top of the bevel, getting rid of any wire edge at the moment. That should be good. We'll put that back out of the way. Set the plane back up now. <sighs> Clean it out. Carefully put our blade in. We want chip breaker on the top. Not too much tension yet because we want to set it up. So we need to know where we are with this. I'm heavier on my right hand side, the left hand side. This is a plane has no lateral adjustment. So we've got to use a little pin hammer, quite a traditional thing. Tap that over. Tiny bit. I can tighten it up. Okay, so we've got our plane ready. Next thing we're gonna want is some material. Now I know from watching the video that a few of you did with Ben on Tuesday, so his Christmas decoration, you kind of said about materials, what can you use? Scroll saw, pine can be a bit open grained. I'm gonna use some pine. Right, quite quite easy to get hold of. Um but even then I'm being a little bit selective. I'm trying to look at the end grain, I'm trying to see. I don't know if you'll pick this up. I don't know if we can see this up on here. It's quite close grain, but it's not. Now, I want to plane up the flat faces. Look at the grain direction. What I don't want too much of, and I have tried using it, is something where I'm planing off this top face with that crown cut. Doesn't give me the right type of shaving. It breaks up a bit too easy. So that can cause a few more issues. All right, so I'm looking for stuff, just quickly to give you a recap. You can see the grains almost running diagonally across that. I can see it there, it comes down through, okay. I've got two or three bits here because I've got two or three different projects we're gonna look at. So I'm looking at grain direction of where we wanna go. We can put that in the vise, pin it up. Now we need to find how much we're cutting. Okay, we're getting a shaving. Okay, it's not bad. Nice little curly shaving, this one. This is how it works on wine. Look, and grab all that. Okay, um, it'll work. But one of the things I found with making these, we want something just a little bit thicker. So all those times when we've done those videos and I said we're trying to take that nice, light, fine cut, that goes out the window now. I'm going to crank this up a bit. Okay, now we want to take something a bit heavier. Yeah, still a bit too fine. Let's bring it up. I want to bring the work up and the vice as well, just for me a little bit, so I'm catching my finger on the far end. So again, let's bring that blade up. Heavier shaving. That feels better, okay? Still not thick, thick, but we can use that in a minute. So I can alter the thickness of the shaving. Thick is just going to make it a bit stronger. That one's better. I'm going to drop it in the trough there for a minute. How many of these do we want? One, two, we'll do three for a minute. And you'll see what we're doing. Nothing difficult in that, is there? Okay, so I'm just going to put them in there. It'll make sense in a minute. That one which was a little bit thinner, I'm going to take down the other end. I'm going to use that in a second. I'll change our piece of wood. I'm going to go with something, and the only reason for changing it is width-wise of what we're making, project, and also length-wise. On here, this is just a little bit wider. I'm setting it up. We can do exactly the same thing. A bit longer. Move that board out of the way for a sec. Got to do exactly the same now. Try to get one constant shaving all the way down through, trying to get equal thickness. Just from quick feel, I think. I'm going to move that blade left a little bit. Ooh, jumped in the middle there. Now, I know I've got change of grain literally along here. So I've got to be careful with that. Right, angle the plane a little bit. 
So we're not cutting dead parallel and control the push and keep my weight down. We can get nice long shaving. Uh, one more to go, I think. So this goes against all those things we've said. Nice light shaving there, all right? Chunky and thick, yeah, right, okay. Now with this one, I'm gonna cut these to length a little bit. Cut the end off now. All my piece of wood here, before I came on here, we have a pencil line, just to give me a guide of the length we want for this project. So, measure it out. Quick measuring stick makes that easy. And there, next one there. Mm, a bit short. Unravel that. One more to cut on here. Got a thin bit in the middle. I can see it's a different thing. This even curls up a bit more. Let's see if we can work away from that. We want equal consistency if we can. Up to there. That'll go. Get rid of that. I don't want that bit. Okay. Putting them in those that white trough. We'll move that back. We can move the plane round a little bit. I think you can still see what we're doing. Let's bring the plane down there. Look, I'm looking on the camera just to see what's going on. We then need... Ben got all excited when I bought this in. I think he thought I was going to make him a cup of tea while we were on here. Some hot water. Okay. Love this bit because actually it gives me an aroma of the steam coming off. I have a pine, got that piney type smell. So I put the water jug out the way we're done with. So we're just going to soak those shavings. Why do we want to soak them? It'll make them more flexible. A bit like our steam bending we did. That's really going to help us make it a bit more flexible. We're just going to put the plane out of the way. If I can't find it in a minute, shout at me and tell me where I've put it. Okay. First little project we said, little Christmas tray. So in here, I've got a piece of plywood. Just as a template. Sorry, Ben. All right. On this, I've done a number of things. I'll bring it back into view just for a second. Got a series of cuts. They're about five mil apart, then they get wider to come down. All right. Length at the bottom. Top of the tree, bottom of the tree. This is your trunk. I know. You've got vivid imagination. Okay. So we're going to use that in a second. We're just going to put it into the vice. Okay. I'll hold up the other one in a second. Ben's got a question for me. Um, so, question from Maria: Is the water hot? The water is hot. It's a boil. I it actually boiled it before we came in. One of my worries with this as a demo was the fact of if it's not hot and I can't keep it hot while we do the talk and the intro and the it doesn't work as well. I can still bend dry shavings so they will go, but bending them warm does really help. You don't need to soak them for too long. So yeah, definitely needs to be warm water will help you bend them. Okay, especially for some of the shouts. Come on, then, Ben. What else you got? Oh, so Martin's just saying he's bought a um, he's bought a number five on the Black Friday deal. Fantastic! So right? uh, he's going to give this one a go. Yeah, give it a good sharpen. Okay, sharpen is the key to anything. You made comments last week about, and I read the comments after the the ball ball demo. Nice sharp screw and everything. What do you think I did before we go on air? I'll make sure it's sharp. Okay, so that sharpening thing's quite an important part. Uh, I'm going to look at some of the stuff after Christmas as well, where some of you might have new stuff. We're going to have a sharpening day. So on here, I've got my loop on the top. I don't know if you can quite see. There's a gap. One there comes down. All right, exactly the same as I'm holding here. All right, so that's where it is in the voice near me. You can see all those little cuts. All right, so I think this shaving will be long enough. Now, this one I can curl. This, this one's dry. So it'll be interesting to see. Now, I've got the two top, and they're quite close together. Realised I've got to do one other thing when I get this on. Lean over the bench. So I'm blocking your view. Just plug in the hot melt glue gun in. Some of these I've been trying to do with PVA. PVA is wonderful. But it doesn't take a long time. So on a video, it's just not easy to do. So what I'm now going to do is weave the wood in between those slots. Gently bending it, not forcing it to make a tight curve or closing that right up. I think you can see, let's just bring you... In just a little bit more. I've got the camera above my head here. 
I think that's better. I can zoom it back out. It's a good place to have the camera as long as I don't lean forward. Again, we've weaved it back over. So now we're coming around, right to there, back over. So gradually these are getting bigger. Weave it in again. Come around to make our loop. Uh, we can have a bit more there now. We can come back a bit here. I can feed back through. That one to there. Don't get them in that slot. I'm working a little bit back to front on how the vice needed to be, so you guys got the best view, believe it or not. Then I'm going to bring this down to here. Now, at this stage, I can start to play around a little bit. This one looks too big. The one underneath is not as big. Let's pull that back in. Okay. A little bit of a split up here, here, which is, again, could be nicer if you steam these, but I'm just trying to give you the scope that you can do a bit dry. Wet. What will affect to make it split? Believe it or not, a simple thing like a knot in the timber or a change of grain direction can play havoc. Okay, so we've got it lined up. I'm going to move the water bottle off the bench, see if Ben's hot melt glue gun's got up to steam yet. Get him there. Let's just do a test bit on the board. Ah, we've got something. So with this... I can do a line where that overlap is. Pencil. I can push that back and close it up. Go careful using your fingers with this. It does not get hot. Okay. So, have a look at our tree shape. What have we got coming in? Not too bad. A little bit there. Wiggle things about. Good. All right. Now, I haven't stuck it to the vice. I can push these down flat, have a quick look. That looks quite good. Now, at the moment, we have that bit. I know, it's, it's simple, wasn't it? I didn't say it was anything difficult this afternoon. Then we want our base. So here we be a little piece of branch material. Cut in half. So I cut it to length first, then cut it in half. Then we can put this on here. So let's just have a quick line up. I'm going to put them on there. If I can get it somewhere on the vice so you guys can see. Right it down. Want it level on the front, one bit, turn it over, checking on flash on the bottom, pretty good. Stand it up, clamp that together. All right, push the branches back in. One tree. All right, real simple little project. But actually, I've got a part of them on the shelf, and all the people have been in today were been setting up going, oh, wow, they're good. So we've got a tray. Right, first one done. Plywood template. Let's just go to this a minute, Ben. Can you just do the three for me? Now, this plywood template, very similar. The spacing starts off, this is like 5 mil apart, 10 mil, 15, 15, 20. So it gradually increases, okay? Tighter down on here. This slot, if you look at it, bigger. That's important. So and the other thing I've done with these, when I cut these and I did them Japanese hand saw, nice and fine, I don't want too big a slot. I then got a bit of a brazier and I've rounded the edges. So I pull it in, take the corners off. Because I don't want it breaking the fibers, okay? So that can be good just to soften them. All right, so we need that in a minute. Come on, then, Ben, what have you got? So a question here from Richard. It's about the, the numbering of the planes. Um, he's asking, does the distance of the mouth of the plane differ from the, from the toe with each number plane? Um, the numbers of one to seven, number one was the smallest, number seven, come up to, let's give you a seven, all right, that's a seven, okay, so basically the number relates to the length of the sole, the mouth size should be about the same, but obviously it'll be further back on each plane, so the longer the plane it is, the easier it is to straighten the board, but the mouth will be the same size in reality, Unusual thing with that was what I used. I used a 62, which is a low angle smoother, actually has an adjustable mouth. All right, so I can move this. Sorry, Ben. All right, on there. I was looking on the screen where I've got multi view because I haven't realized that. Right, so you can see I can open and close that mouth. I can open up, which is quite beneficial for this. Now, if you bought something like a standard number five and you want to do what we're doing now, let me grab the five off the shelf. Okay, there's a number five. All right, back in there. The mouth on here is a set width. 
But what we can do, if you find your shavings, because you want to fix shaving, won't go through the mouth, you might need to undo and take the blade out. One, take your blade. Loosen the two screws where my fingertips are here. Use the adjuster screw, if I can get it angled, which is right down in here. Let me just grab the pencil off the bench. And if I sit that, something still. That screw right down there, that silver one. That will adjust the frog forward and back. By moving it back, you're making the mouth up more open so you get less support on the shaving, but it will allow those thicker shavings to go through. So if that becomes an issue, you can understand how you can adjust that mouth. Okay? So the mouth on the Bailey or Bedrock style planes are not adjustable. Okay? So hopefully that helps you with that one. Okay. Back to what we're making now. Oh, yeah, that one. So we've got the board. And I said about that bigger slot. Just going to run down the other end of the bench. I want to get one of those shavings out of there. Now in here, we're going to create a loop. Okay. Now I don't need to come right back to the first one. I can go to there. I think you can probably see what's going on. I'm going to drag that round. I can move it round. Now, with this being wet, I have got the scope that it's a bit more pliable and easier to bend. All right. So I'll bring that into there. I'm trying to maintain my shape. So we've gone there. That's come back. I think we've come to there. Now I need to just drag the whole lot over. Good. Coming back into the first slot, which is that one I said that's wider. Next one. So I'm gradually working back. My tight area is this back corner, back on here. There, I can keep going. Back in. Now that one I can blend into just up in here. All right. So I believe, let's just have a quick look. I'm gonna lift this out. You can now see what I've done as a shape. Most of the shaving is wrapped around that first hole, so it should look thicker here. Gradually gets wider apart. I can juggle things about again, move things to get positions that we want, move it in and out. Okay. Now, do you think this is damp? Ideally, we need to let it dry. So now you need that really important commodity for this. Um, we need some wood clamps. All right, you can never have enough clamps. So I'm just fighting with them at the moment. Ben's not started laughing. That's a good sign. He's focusing on the computer, though. Okay, so I'm just going to do these then, Ben. Um, let's just move that back into there. So here we go. So my, my new wood clamps you will need to dash out and buy. You can never have enough. The paper clip. Um, some of you might have bobby clips, which I will... And a few of you might be looking at the computer screen and going, what did he just say? A bobby clip. Yes, I had to Google it as well, all right? Okay. So a couple of paper clips just on there just to pin it in place. Because now we can let that dry. All right? So if we let it dry naturally, it will retain that shape quite well, nicely. Then we can glue the end. If I try and glue it now, the hot melt glue gun will cause a few issues with it. It tends to go white. We can glue it, but... It's better to let it dry out, all right? So you can see what we get there, which in reality, and I've got different ones. You can have snowman if you like. All right, it, it is a snowman, I promise, all right? So I've got there, okay? So exactly that same technique of wrapping them around works well. The simple plywood holder takes all that fiddliness out of trying to grip it and hold it. Okay, Ben, what have you got? Um, so a couple of questions here, Jason. First one is from Jim. He's um He's new to it so he's a novice wood worker he's asking would an electric planer work no why not okay in reality then can we go to chem of two please your electric planer has a round cylinder block a circle into it there is a cutter that's mounted so the cutter's only taking that little swipe. So actually, an electric planer will give you a really short shaving. I mean, like three, four mil. A hand plane gives you something unique, as in a long spiral shaving. Incredibly long, okay? So an electric planer, definitely not going to work. 
can never have enough hand planes ever. I mean, right? And you can't be that sound. Of, okay, if you're an IB, the engine fan, you you will know the the, the noise of. Right, so <laughs> real easy one. Okay? okay, Ben, if you can get a straight face, so, you can give me the other question. <laughs> I'm, I cracked him up now. He's gone. I've lost the him. Sound effects. So, um, um, Martin's um, asking um, for a suggestion for a block plane because there seems to be a lot to choose from. It's a oh my god! I mean, there's thousands, isn't there? Um, if you ask me if I was going to go and buy, I mean, this is the snow. My favorite block plane at home is Veritas one. Okay, um, this is low angle. Okay, because I know the next question I get is there a difference between low and high angle? Right, let me just reach up again because we're going to need that up a bit. Hoping you can see if I hold these together, they're slightly different. This is the low angle, higher angle. Lower angle will be better as a block plane for using for end grain, or even what I'm doing now. My other plane I wanted to use for this, if you wanted something slightly bigger than a block plane, which we'll show you, is a low angle smoother, but I got a mini one. But I would go with the Veritas low angle block plane, okay? Standard one, I love that. I love the fact of how it sits in my hand. Nice whip, adjustable mouth, Norris style adjuster on the back. So what does that mean? That means this has got lateral movement. So we can go left or right. You've also then got your movement on here, on that knob, I spin it round. Do you fact it's a fine cut screw pad, you've got more control and no backlash. Or very little compared to a normal block plane or a normal bench plane. So real nice features. It's also got lots of the features that Veritas put into their planes. We have adjustable mouth. We have two side set screws. That stops the blade moving too much left or right when you start to cut the work. So it stops it skidding off. So it's loaded with features, not overly expensive. You're still going to say, oh, I can't. I think this is about 80, 90 pounds. I might be wrong. Might be a bit more. OK, but it will last you years. OK. Lovely how it fits in the hand. OK, so good little block plane. Let's move the other one out of the way. All right. So, Ben, you OK for a sec? OK, good. Like, let's move. That's out of the way. I need the vice out of the way for a minute. So pattern maker's vice is really useful to do what we've done because it's a whole thing and given me good access to get all the way around it. So uh, I really was struggling earlier in the week of how am I going to hold these to show you what's going on. And I thought the pattern maker's vice, I can move anywhere. Great for that. All right. So that bit done. Let's drop this over. I'm going to bring this in a minute. Jump in the gun, Ben. But kind of. Now, what we did with our, our spiral one we just done, because we didn't explain where we're going, that's that. That's one. So you do another four. And by using the template board, which is so easy to make, you can make them repeatable. The spacing's the same. Your wrap round can be the same. A couple of little clamps on there, hold it, let it dry. Fantastic. Middle one of this, just another one, but done tighter as a spiral, almost using a pencil and then glued. And then just bond them on. Hot milk glue is so much easier than PVA as well because it dries quicker. Okay, so that's giving the scope of what we've done with that. Should we have a look at this then? What do you reckon? I love this. Okay, I've got two or three versions of this. Got that one? My favourite. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? You've got like little ribbons and all sorts, all right? So you could easily do this to hang on your Christmas tree. Wouldn't that be nice? Something that's totally unique. No one else has got them. So that's up on there. Let me get a stall in. So in here, got that. One, two, three, four. I don't want a long one, short ones. So remember those short bits we cut down the other end? There they are. Let me just sit down. Um... I can move the camera in just a little bit for you. I'm using the whiteboard because you should be able to see a bit more, okay? This is so simple to do this. You'll find most shavings will only bend one way when you've cut them. There will be a smooth side, rough side underneath. I can fold it. Did you get that? So we go from there, bring it in. I don't know who it is overnight that creeps into my room and links all the paper clips together. 
They weren't like it yesterday when I took them all off. I haven't explained. These are all Ben's paper clips anyway. So, done that. Clip it together so it'll dry. Next one. Now, I'm overlapping to create that little V on the bottom end. A couple of paper clips just to hold it. One, two. Most of the I can probably get away with one. Put it out of the way. How did they ever get like this? All right, okay. And over. Put it in. Not very good paper clip. Go careful. Your bobby hair clips will be slightly better because they're longer. Um, did I try any of things like our spring loaded clamps with the red grips? I tried. They're a bit too heavy for me to hold to do this. Not fragile enough. Okay. So you get those. Now, this one actually not quite right. The other's actually a bit more open. We could leave them because they will give you the effect of. So this is more open. Let's show you what I'm looking at. This loop on the far end, okay, quite open here. We've got a couple of spare ones still, short one, that one there. So what we've just done, without wrecking it, is that one loop more open on that shell. One I've got on the desk, on the bench here, let's do that. So by altering the shape you do on the back edge of it, the curve, and where you clamp it, I can alter this opening area. One there, one there. Very different. Gives you a different effect. Now, again, I need to let them dry. So, on the bench here somewhere. Oh, there, there. there they are. How about these? Clean that off in a bit. So these are the ones we've done. On here, I can undo. That will stay automatically now at that shape. Might have been steam bent. I'll lay it down on the bench. I can have a look on here. I can figure out how much overlap we want. I can draw a line. A line just becomes a guideline. Don't go doing it heavy. Picking up the glue gun, probably bring everything else with it. Now with my glue gun, I don't want masses of glue. I can scribble and use the tip to spread the glue about. Nice light pressure on that trigger. Bring it into place, line them up so I'm getting an equal end, equal crossover, still quite tight on that bottom curved end. Okay, one. Next one, we'll do the same again. I'm checking the ends as well. If on here, this one doesn't look dead square, trim it off. Pair of scissors, much easier than a knife for this. Again, my overlap point, I've got a line of where I want to be, just as a quick guide so I can see where my glue's got to go, especially your hot melt glue. Ooh. Drag it about, I can position it a bit. All right, so you've got a little bit of open time on there, you can move it to separate those out. Again, just a quick look. We need four of these. So I we'll draw a line down through. Again, nice and light, just as a guideline. Pin that in. Not too much glue. Spot of glue over there. Best way I found to get rid of that is a little six inch ruler, which is not there. I've got square. Right. Don't use anything sharp if you've got a spot of glue on it. And tap it off with something square-ended. Definitely go. don't go with a chisel because it'll cut through it. So, right, we've got one more to do. And I'm sorry if this is a bit repetitive, but you'll see where we're heading. Four, we've got our end. That's probably a bit open. Let's bring it round a bit. Get our angle a bit more. Bring it down in. Now, who'd have thought you're going to make your Christmas decorations out of your wood shavings? Um, I'm going to apologise for a few of the guys out there and girls out there are going to go, can you go make me some wood shavings? I've even been asked by one of the guys that works in here, can you make me some wood shavings for the weekend? 
So we can have a go. There we go. That's not one. One, two, three. So we've got our four. You ideally need eight of these. Right? If you're going to do what we're going to do. 16 if you're going to do the complete back-to-back. -back. Now what I'm going to do, pin them together. I can go inside. Let's do one there. I'm going to need my glasses a minute. Back on there. Bring them down. I'm going to turn it around first. Look. And, uh, I had this problem I said to Ben yesterday that I can't look at what I'm doing and look at the computer screen to see that I've got you guys in, in camera shot. That's it. All right. Paper clip. Blue office on the end of it. Okay. Just looking up to see I've got you guys on the middle of my board. Put that clip. Whoop. And on there. Together. Everyone down there. Oops. Go together. Okay. That's quite good, isn't it? These, at this stage, carefully, I can flip it over. And again, if I'm, I try doing this with PVA, and you can do it with PVA. The problem with PVA is that drying time. So I found if I do a line of hot melt glue, Okay, we'll get that in there. I've got to hold this flat. I'm just going to lift the glasses up. Okay, Ben, what have you got? That's perfectly timed as a question. It just means I can hold <laughs> yeah, this nice and still while the glue goes through. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, Dances with Ardfax is asking, how long does it take, <clears throat> excuse me, how long does it take to prepare for one of these lives, to prep and prepare? You don't want to know. <laughs> All right. Um, it depends. Some of the stuff um, is well practiced and done. Um, the guys that know me will know I make a lot of turn boxes. I can walk in the room. I can have my wood ready. I can go. Um, demo I did last year is up on here. Let's just reach up. This time last year, we did Rudolph, the fridge magnet. Um, that was two and a half days of prep time playing about just to get that thing into an hour slot so you guys could see it. So some of them can take a lot of time. This demo for you, I started this time last year and we didn't put it in. I came back having been off for a week and got, you're doing your Christmas stars. <laughs> Am I? Okay. Um, all right. So here it is. Okay. All right, Ben, let me just do... I do this, and I come back to you. So, no, some of the demos can take quite a lot of prep time. Ben, you've got your mic open as well. You know, you know as well as I do. Some of these can, we have to do a bit of organisation, thinking about what we're doing. Now, I've just put the four I had together on the shelf behind me. These are a bit more curled. They've dried out a bit more differently. All right, they will settle down a bit. I'm just going to link the two lots of four together. One line there, one there. Put them together. Okay, Ben, let's do you have a question because again, the glue can go cold while I just hold this. If you hear me scream, you know, it got hot. Okay, so uh, Chris has got a question. It's, he says it's a bit off topic, but what finish would you use for a knife handle? For a knife handle? Depends what you're going to do with this knife. Um, traditionally, I would probably go with something as an oil finish. Okay, because you can put more coats on. It will also become slightly more water resistant. We've got more and more coats on. You could go with an epoxy layer. But again, once you, if you chip it and the water gets in underneath, then you've got more issues again. So it's getting all those things right. Um, I do like an oil finish because I know I can rejuvenate it, rub it back, put it back on. Okay. It's not dishwasher safe. Um, I have some knives that we used to sell here. I spare Japanese laminated knives. They don't go in my dishwasher. They have a wooden handle. We wipe them over. That's it. All right, so you need to think carefully about what you're going to do with a knife, all right? But ideally, an oil finish will get into the wood, not on the surface. If you do a varnish, a lacquer, or any of those things, the minute you chip or you get water in underneath, then it's going to start to peel off. So you've got more problems then, okay? So I hope that gives you a bit of a guide, a bit of help, all right? One here we've just done, so there's the one we got, okay? Put it together. They look quite smart, don't they? I love the colours of these, all right? So at this stage, we can undo paper clips, hopefully. We'll find out in a second, look. 
Um, difference on shape of these. If I said to you, these are curled where I dried them. I didn't lay them down flat last night, so I get more of a curled edge. So that's more in line with what I showed you earlier. If I put them down, I keep them flat, get things nice and flat. So it depends what you do with them when you steam them. But this sort of thing, you can do them so they're back to back now. You could even maybe interlock them. A whole range of things. Other thing I started playing around with, let's just zoom the camera back a little bit, which will quite far in. What about if you got some different coloured wood? So you have that. Now, we said you, you could stain this, which leads to, let's do that first because <laughs> I had some fun. I had some fun. Ben's going to laugh. Okay, on here, we have one, two, three, four, five. I think there's seven on there. And there's red, white, red, white. Okay. And now a funny loop thing over the top. Something that you can hang off your tray. It was really nice to do. Red and white looks really good. So how did I do the red and white? Spirit stain. Great. Now I did some Monday. Or last Friday or Thursday, I stained them. I left them to dry out. Seven or eight rolls, just done as curls, soaked in some red dye. It soon really soaks it in and absorbs it. So I let them dry out over the weekend. Tuesday, I decided I'd put them in some water so I could make them more pliable to bend them. Now, why wouldn't have thought that the minute you throw a wood shaving in water with a spirit dye, the dye's going to come out? Yeah, it does in a big way. Um, I've got red spots on the floor, and it looks like I cut myself quite violently. Maria, we've had that conversation in the past. How do you get spirit stain off your hands? Yeah, it took me a lot of scrubbing to get it off. I couldn't believe. Now, it didn't stain anything else. But really, you know, even the white dish down the end, it stained a little bit. So I can't believe that spirit stain will do that if I put it in water. So these have got to be done. Probably I would actually steam them if you're going to bend them. Let them dry, then dye them would be a better way, okay, before you put them together. So you could choose your own colour, okay? Right, back to here a minute. Now, instead of you wanted to add different colour, what about different coloured woods? So this is some dark tulip. How about you started doing something intermediate? Three, got one more. Oh, there it is, look. Uh, so I could glue these in at the moment. I'm just pushing them in. But I think you'll get the idea that you could easily have something that looks sweet. Just different colours and different shapes. So we kill these. Then what have I done with these? Let's just pull these out. All right, we'll drop it over. I've got some over here. These were slightly bigger. Same thing we've done. Carefully put it down. Line of glue. You've got to go careful because the glue's got nice and hot now. Put them in there. Let it dry. Okay. Push it down. That's good. So we've now got, if you like, the ice cream cone. Now we get this crossover. Cut it off. Up that line. Oops, go that way. It's easier for me to get that. So you can create that beautiful pointed shape. Now if you combine that with something where we've got that open shape on the V and you put the two together, it can look quite spectacular if you get your sizes right, okay? So just using different colours, you could trim them, a whole range of things, all right, Ben? Um, so we've got a question from Maria. She's asking, would you be able to um, cut these, cut strips on a bandsaw or scroll saw? Possibly. There, I would say bandsaw. Ben, you, you've got a better aspect with your scroll saw, but you've got to get quite thin. And you want the repeatability of what you're trying to do. Um, more tempting to do if you didn't want to plane these would be use veneer. So buy pre-cut veneer and go with it that way. That can, might be a better way of doing and you could steam band that quite nicely. Um, I'm quite shocked. I mean, I'll pick up the other plane here. This is the Veritas Charlotte plane, which I said, uh, this is what I kind of like if you were after a bit slightly bigger bulk plane. Where can we go? Let's go down to another one, Ben. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Down to there. Slightly bigger bulk plane. So let's get the block plane we looked at. Oh, I think that I'll go to a whiteboard. Look, just to give an overhead. 
All right, so slightly bigger. It's a bit more money. We haven't got any stock of these. This this I know as a Charlotte plane was the original name for it. I changed that. It has a handle. And I say, all right, bigger blade. So why do I want this? Now, I can take, I've opened the mouth up, low angle blade. I wonder what we're taking at the moment. Oh. No, I've got to control it, got to feed it. That through. That is an amazing shaving to bend. Okay, that's over a millimeter thick. That's almost like veneer. Yes, I know it's all those things I've told you guys you shouldn't be doing with your plane and abusing it. Okay, but keep it sharp. That's beautiful. If you go thicker, you've got the problems with it bending and breaking. That's where your water tub really comes in. Got to soak them. You can see how small these are curled up to just in that water. Okay, I can easily get uh, pull it in. All right, make a loop. Look at that. Isn't that lovely. Um, I've been trying to figure out ways of making like a long spiral, but supporting it, maybe a dowel down it with a colour inside could look good. But that's quite an impressive shape to do, and how much we can actually wrap these round. This one might be a good one to do with. Right? Another little technique I started playing with. It's on some of the bows behind. Get your bow. All right, come back. Where am I there? Bend it. Create a loop. Come over. So... Hoping you can see that bending is shout me if I'm not there. All right. So do two. All right. Just gonna undo my paper clip. I'm gonna have to hold it now. Now you could go with bench stapler, normal stationary stapler for this. We're up to three. My shaving's not long enough, so this is off the Christmas tree one that we did, not the other one. Bring that in. We can go four. Okay. But if you start working them around, if it had been longer, I could have five create a star. But it's all one piece of wood at the moment. So it's amazing what you can tie that up with just from doing loops. All right, so I've even got something like that. Almost like a chain. One piece. No joints, glued together, a few paper clips, hold it in place. All right, so you can see how it becomes quite versatile. Um, I've had some odd looks this week where I've been sat down just sort of doing this and go, what are you doing making christmas decorations okay so you can see how you can loop them around now some of those uh let's reach up and get one gotta go careful which i think i just snatched this with the yeah gotta go the other way so bear with me a sec hooked them inside okay uh bring the camera back for you a little bit that's all that is and again, at the moment, this has got no colour, but just folded to create that star effect. This is almost like your ribbon, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five. And they've got five over there. Three on here and then five in the middle. They will be one pace. So quite impressive to do. On these, I use stapler. And then cover the staple with the last few. All right. Hot glue gun just to hold that in place. Incredibly light. Quite, you know, quite amazing you can bounce those around. Okay. Other different shapes we've got. Star. We did tree. Did that one. Did the colour. Did our chain. Did the Christmas tree. Right. Okay. I think I've got most of what I've got on the wall behind me. It was good. What I wanted to show you. All right. How long do they take to dry out? Hey, you can leave it an hour. It'll be dry. Dry enough for you to start gluing. Like I said, if I put the glue on now, it's going to go a bit white quite quickly and the moisture is going to affect it. It won't stick as well. So you need to let them dry. But lots of different shapes. And, I mean, that's beautiful. Quite organic as a shape, quite natural. And again, like I said, if you started making a wreath that you had on your door or something, interwind it, you can put some colour on it, you can put some wood dye on it, you can put some oil. All those things that go onto this nicely help preserve it. You can hang it up. Start incorporating it, like we said, with other things, with ivy, your holly, some red berries, some mistletoe. What more could you want? Something very different, very organic as a Christmas thing. And more have a major thing maybe with this. It's not plastic. Um, we as a company really looking at what we try and decrease of plastic use and whatever else. So even things like this can be really nice. And this is something normally you probably put in the bin. So, Ben, you got anything else? Anything you want to ask? I think we're all right. You think you've got most of them? Come on, then, let's have a look. 
Well, there was a question from Woodwork Woodworking Learner, which I don't think we'll know the oh, answer yeah. to. Um, it, it's um, about men's sheds discount um, online orders. Um, Woodwork Learner, I think you're going to have to contact our customer service for that. It's, it's not something we we would know off the top of our heads. No. Um, but I can, if you email into our Woodworking Wisdom thing, I can find that out and email you back if, if that would help. Um, where, oh, where do you get the ideas from your shape? That's from Woodwork Learner as well. Anything. We all sit down. So, I mean, I'll give you an idea. We have a monthly meeting occasionally to try and go over what we can do as a video. So not just today. Today was about that, that email. Can we do something as a Christmas style decoration that doesn't involve me having to buy a wood label, get a fret saw or get a wood hand plane? Most of you have access to a hand plane somewhere. Hot melt glue gun. They're not that expensive. It makes it quicker. Paper clips, we don't sell those, but they're not expensive, okay? <laughs> and time, I'm, it's actually quite quite therapeutic and stressful some of the time we're trying to do some of the demos and trying to think of what we can do you know, next week of the demo. But to sit down and start doing shapes and going, oh, wow, and how things alter. You know, those two are so different, but made exactly the same way. You know, very different to do, all right? Just different shapes on what you get. Made exactly the same way, different loop, different tightness on that curve will affect how it comes together. So then play and practice. Um, and it can be, you know, there are certain certain ones we've done as groups where they don't work. Maybe we get worried about audience figures, questions. But this is something very different. It was different for me. This was in at the deep end of what can I make here as a Christmas decoration and almost out of something that's waste. So there is that scenario, isn't there, okay? Um, and that's what today was about, trying to give you something that you could make easily, get your kids involved. We as a company, again, uh, Ben did it yesterday with Colwyn. I've got next week. We're going out to one of the local schools. We're doing a session down there where they do actually some laminating, some pen turning, a bit of fret work. All right? That's really nice to try and get the kids involved. So this would be fantastic. What Christmas decorations you can have. I used a line last week of my mum has a Christmas tree decoration that's a surfing Santa that I bought in Hawaii. Every year I see it, I laugh and smile because I know where it came from. Imagine your grandchildren, they come out and they've got this on your tree. You've had it this year. Next year, you get it back out and it's on the tree. Ten years time, if you look after it, it will still be there. And they're like, wow, I made that. I made that when I was eight. <laughs> But it's that scenario, isn't it? All right. These could become little heirloom things if you look after them. All right. You can make your star for the top of the tree. I haven't figured out a fairy yet. All right, Ben. Um, so it's just one I missed earlier from Maria. Um, I think about, you know, when you're uh, folding them. So you want them thinner, which would make them a lot less likely to if break. If you go too thin, they don't last too well. Um, the shavings can become too crushable, but they will bend easier. But long term, it's not got the rigidness to make it last. So this will flex about. I can, okay. If I have something that's thicker, it's not going to tear and break. But I need the help with bending it initially. Hot water. Simple as that. Cooking tub, boil the kettle, put it in the water. Even cold water will work. Hot water is nicer to play with, isn't it, on this? All right. You've got to go careful on how much. Uh, but you can start to say, even this now, that water is not hot now. I can fold it create shapes make loops i can keep going i mean you could have a doesn't look very decorative now but gives you the scenario how easy that is to do and sit down and have a play do a table and i said you've got your grandkids coming around or you've got kids at the weekend and you want to actually do something where you could make your own decorations and is it next week the tree goes up okay mine goes up the week before christmas no no it doesn't a few weeks before okay all right i get in trouble now so hopefully You've enjoyed this, giving you a bit of inspiration of different things. As we said, no penguins were harmed in making this video, Maria, okay? Um, but different ideas of maybe what you could do for a Christmas tree decoration. It doesn't involve lots of fancy gear. A hand plane, hot milk glue, some paper clips. Ben? 
so frederick's just sneaked in a question here he's um saying could you spray it with sanding sealer to strengthen it after you've done all of the, the shaping yeah once you've done everything there you've stuck them together you could put some sealer on you could use your airbrush kits so we were looking at i mean cohen was going to do one of the trees for me yesterday where on the little tree we were going to color the edges with an airbrush that'd be so easy to do wouldn't it i mean okay so i got myself in there's a tree look, that's what we did earlier so you can airbrush the edges okay you can imagine even with the star i've got here you could do the ends you could airbrush but actually you can do that stage when they like this and they dried so you could stain the ends if you wanted. You could cut. So this one I cut little corner bits out. If I can get my hands in, get that ribbon effect. Did that whilst they were still a small stage, then glue them together. So yes, you could do the staining as you go. You could have alternate colours, anything like that. Easily build that thing into it. And by adding some colour would be nice. Maybe some glitter. Maybe you've got the aspect you could hold. If you think about it, the ends of these up. You could colour them with a bit of PVA glue, dip them in some glitter, you get sparkly ends. All those things can come into it. It's a whole world of things. And as I said when I started this, we love getting the emails from you saying, no, I know, you show me how to make, right? We love getting those emails and reading it. It'd be lovely to see, I've done your Christmas tree days, but I've coloured it with this. I was, I'd love to see them, all right? And it's quite inspiring from my point of view. So at times when Ben's sat here nodding, we get feedback. We know someone's watched this video. Um, I, uh, we're all used to teaching people in public and regularly seeing face to face. We don't do that. I now look at a camera. It's not a real person. It, it doesn't nod. He's over here going, yeah, okay. So that scenario. So if we get a feedback from your videos, fantastic. Helps us know that you've appreciated them. All right. I hope you've enjoyed today. Very different thing. Something different for me to even do. And put me in at the deep end with this of. Let's see if you make Christmas decoration out of a wood shaving. Okay. So, hope you've enjoyed. Thumbs up. We will see you next week. I can't remember what we've got next week. Something on Tuesday. We will be here, I promise. All right. Take care of yourselves. Have a good weekend. Thank you very much.